There's the sun. Look at that. Oh, I think I made it to the end. Uh, there's another trail that goes that way. But I think the water's right here. Yep. It's a steep little hill. There's another trail that goes in another direction. <coughs> but there's a nice piece of trail tape. Oh, I managed to catch a couple snowflakes on my hand. So yes, it is snow. Well, so far I have noticed that there's not a lot of red in Tomogamy, where I've been anyway. Um, but there's some nice red leaves here on this portage, so I figured I'd capture some of them. So yesterday when I was saying that the trees were scraping the canoe on the top, and it was sounding horrible. This is kind of what it was like times 10. <laughs> These are just little tiny branches. Yesterday it was like big evergreen trees. to give you an idea. Okay, I'm here, yay! Oh, I've got my first little beaver dam ahead. Doesn't look too bad. I might just be able to paddle right over it. I could just paddle like this all day long. <laughs> the snow has stopped. I wonder what I think was snow. I'm pretty sure it was. And the sun is trying to come out, but so far it's not succeeding. No, oh, it's getting really hungry, so I pulled out one of my wraps. Uh, this is an S plus ha ha moo. <laughs> Salami and laughing cow cheese. Oh, sunshine, are you coming out? I'm paddling through the whistling grasses. Supposedly there's water somewhere over there. <laughs> Hopefully I can get through. Huh. I think I made it. <laughs> Weird. This is super pretty. Camp one a petty. Probably saying it wrong. And now I'm out in Sandy Inlet. Yes, there's loons, but huh, I missed him. I just watched an eagle soaring above these trees, and then he dive bombed into the water and got a fish, and I couldn't catch any of it. <laughs> Okay, I gotta go. I'm on big water. The second I stop paddling, see, I'm facing the total opposite direction right now of the way I was going. Paddled about three kilometers through Ferguson Bay. I've got another six to go to get to Kewadin. Um, there isn't really much to see here. The water is very calm. I'm grateful. Not a lot of wind. Um, I'm just gonna keep paddling till I get there. 
just paddling past Ferguson Mountain. It's quite beautiful. Uh, looks like it's about as high, maybe a bit higher even than Spirit Rock was. Um, don't quote me on that, but just what it looks like to me. Well, I finally made it to Devil's Mountain, just over there. There um, is the uh, Devil's Island where Kiwaden is, so I'm about a kilometer away and I can't wait to get there. I've been paddling, feels like I've been paddling forever. I don't like paddling on big water, especially when it's crappy out. See this puppy? I don't know where Dave is, but there's his dog. Hey! Well, I am here at Dave's cabin at the Kewaden camp. Um, paddled here earlier today. I arrived around 3, 3.30. And uh, just been hanging out with Dave. I'm drinking a hot chocolate with some Baileys in it. Sitting by a beautiful warm fire. I finally just took off um, one of my jackets. I have five layers on. And uh, it was actually shaking when I came in here for quite some time. Um, walked around the camp, Dave showed me around. It's such a beautiful place here. And uh, it's really cool, cool really cool area. Um, but uh, it was uh, raining earlier, it was snowing, and there was actually some sleet too. So I'm kind of glad I'm not out. I mean, not that I can't be, but change of plans. So I'm making the most of it. So Dave brought me to show me this tree, which is how many years old? So this tree, we figure it was seeded in 1776. So it's like 240, something like that. Holy smokes. They did a core sample back in 1987. They drilled it and took a core sample to get the, uh, the ring age. That's crazy. Well, I definitely have to hug this tree. And this, this tree here, <laughs> When you come in here, like on a, a moonlit night, it's, it's almost glowing. You come, and this whole area is lit right up because the needles just, they reflect the moonlight and the whole area glows. It's just magical. Oh, you have to take a picture of that for me sometime. I'd love to see that. Thanks for showing me the tree, Dave. You're welcome. Well, this certainly beats my freeze dried meal I had planned for this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of the blue, I before I left, I said, "No, if I could get a paycheck and be there, pointing at Tomogamy, I don't even know why it came out. It just came out, and this was what do you do?" I said, "A little bit of everything, but right now it's a handyman renovations gig I'm doing." And she said, "Oh, we might be looking for for someone." And then here we are. And here you are. Four years later, and I'm so this plaque here, all these plaques, the circle is building, are, there's one for each year of all the staff and, and campers that were here. And this particular plaque, 1910, I think it was 1909 and 1910. If you look under the, the list of the guides, who everybody in the canoe world is Grey Owl. He was a guide here for two years. And of course, he was famous for his environmental research on the beavers. Well, <laughs> this is my fancy room for the night. This is some pretty uh, luxury camping I got going on here. <laughs> uh, Dave has been a wonderful host and uh, had a delicious steak dinner. I've just been um, sharing stories and uh, enjoying the company and the fire and being warm and um, I, I've decided that uh, I'm going to head out tomorrow. I'm just going to head home and enjoy the rest of my long weekend and uh, regroup. Well, this is a little better than oatmeal outside in minus two. What is it today? Two degrees? Feels like cold. Well, I'm here with Dave, who's the caretaker of Kiwaden. I've been saying it wrong all this time. Now I know better. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this camp and why you're here. So this camp, Kiwaden, 
was formed in, in Maine, in the U.S. It was Camp Kaku, was the original, original name. And that was in 1893. And they were there for about 10 years, and then they decided to do some exploration further north. So they, it was a group of, I believe it was eight, eight people all total. They did the train and steamship up to Lake Temiskaming and then came across over to here in search of more, uh, just more places to explore, bigger adventures. And that, that was in 1903. Yeah, 1903 when they came up here and they, they actually, we just this year found the original campsite that they stayed on, which is just south of here. And then they came up again the following year and they, they found this island here, which is known as Devil's Island. It's a 53, 54 acre island. And they decided to pitch their tents here and stake the claim on it. And they ended up uh, buying it the year later. The government made a, made uh, islands available for purchase up here. Uh, on Lake Tamagami, the whole, the, the outer shoreline, the mainland, is all crown land. There's no building allowed on it, so it's only on the islands where you'll see cottages, which keeps the population down and, and makes us, when you start tripping into the crown land, it's it's so so untouched. It's, it's very, it's very wild here. Mm. And so in 1904, they started this became the camp, and this year we marked our 125th anniversary. And uh, we we usually have about 100 and 180 campers in the year. It's a six-week program, and the kids travel anywhere from out of base camp here on Lake Tomogamy. As they get older, they keep venturing out further, and the ultimate trip is their Section A or their Section 1 trip, which will take them up to Hudson Bay or Ngava Bay. It'll be a 50-day Oh my trip. goodness. And, and it's both boys and girls, boys right? And girls. This year marks our 20th anniversary of the girls being part of our camp. And it just was guys before that. Yes. Oh, well, yay, girls. <laughs> and now I would say we're pretty much 50 50 with boys and girls. That's amazing. The girls have really taken a stronghold. And I know there are going to be some boys that hear me say this, but I kind of feel the girls trip harder. <laughs> Of course we do. <laughs> when does the season run here? Like how long does it go? We start, the first people come on the island May 20th. We have an early crew for about a month from May 20th to June 24th roughly. And that's getting everything all cleaned up. There's tons of work. There's trees that fall. There's a lot of cleanup to get the camp all in process. And then the campers will start showing up I think around June 26th. Um, about 90, probably 99% of our campers here are all from the U.S. It's it's an American camp, so there's really not a lot of time spent in the camp. Yeah. Maybe about five days out of that whole six weeks. The rest is all on the water in the in the in the back country. Did you go to camp when you were little? No, I I didn't I never either. Did. <laughs> I wish I went to a camp yeah. like this. My life would have been so different, I think. But yeah. you know, better late than never, right? Well, see, this is my thing. This is this is my camp experience now, but I get to live it every day. But it's still, it's you're part of the campers, and you're you're one of the kids. You mm. Stay young. Forever young. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. You mentioned that this is mostly Americans that come here. Mm -hmm. Where are the Canadians? Why is it just Americans? It's it's all mostly because Americans. of our recruiting program. It's oh. All our recruiting is done through the school systems, and there's 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 a bunch of specific schools that they deal with, like Bates. And originally, all our, our staff were teachers, and so they're they're, they're students. Some of their parents would send. A lot of them came from boys' schools and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of a significant school system that they're coming out of. A lot of Montessori kids, and then of course once once one kid goes from there they go back and they tell their friends and it just blossoms within that school system but canadians can come oh we're more than welcome to have them but it just doesn't get promoted as much in canada i'm recruiting canadians right now you guys get your butts here you should be here this is a canadian thing it's a is for canadians too yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, we have a few Canadians. We've got you know, Hap Wilson's daughter and son both came here. Well, Dave, it's almost time for me to go. I had a great time. It was a pleasure having you show up here. <laughs> well, thank you for letting yeah. me crash yeah. and just show up uninvited. <laughs> and dinner and breakfast. Had lovely meals and beautiful bed to sleep in. Got out of the sleet and the snow. Not that I wanted to, but that's the way it happened for this trip. So um, thanks so much for your hospitality. It's my pleasure. You're welcome you. here anytime. I hope to see you again soon. Well, yes. You better, I'll take you up on that. You know that. <laughs> you know where I live now. I do. I'm going to come back. Okay. <laughs> well, Dave has kindly loaded my canoe up on the boat. <laughs> And uh, he's going to take me back towards the portage into Red Squirrel because I don't even want to paddle that far. <laughs> so it's up there. And we're going to get on this sucker. And we're going to go for a boot. coming on the boat then paddling all that way and it, I was really surprised actually how far I came in the canoe yesterday on such big water for me anyways I'm not a big water paddler so um, I'm glad Dave offered to to drop me off here Just paddling through the river in between uh, Ferguson Bay and Red Squirrel Lake uh, back in the grassy area and uh, just have to paddle to the portage and then um, got the 700 meter portage from um, Ferguson Bay into Red Squirrel and then I'm back on Red Squirrel and then I have like two and a half kilometers to paddle to get to uh, the takeout where my car is so it was really cool seeing Dave and spending some time with him and uh, it was great getting back on the boat um, it's pretty nasty out today it's really cold it's about two degrees and uh, it's raining um, spitting like right now actually and raining on and off and snowing on and off so um, I'm really glad that I didn't have to paddle all that way back up uh, from Devil's Island to Ferguson Bay. Well, Dave said that moose are often seen here in this little river. It's to be very quiet, so I'm trying to be really quiet paddling through here. Hoping I'd see a moose. That would be just fantastic right now. It would certainly brighten my mood. Well, I've arrived to the portage. 700 meters into Red Squirrel. Well, I just finished the 700 meter portage. Uh, it took me way longer than it should have. So I got about two and a half kilometers to paddle to the takeout and uh, I'm gonna go before I get sucked into this. <laughs> okay, bye! Well, as I began my paddle back to the takeout, it started raining really hard, so 
I've just got my head down and I'm just paddling really hard to get back ASAP. It was a rainy day. <laughs> this is not snowing. Well, even though it poured all the way back, I'm pretty soaked. <laughs> um, I'm really grateful because the winds were down and uh, it wasn't wasn't a very hard paddle other than just being uncomfortable in the rain. So I've got about three minutes, two minutes to paddle to get to the takeout and uh, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, well it's just after one o'clock. Just brought the pack and the food barrel to the car. Just got the canoe left to bring over there and put it up. Uh, it's been pouring for the last, I don't know, hour or so. Um, my hands are getting really cold. I took my gloves off and I just didn't want to put them back on. I didn't want to stop paddling. I just wanted to go. Um, not the recap I wanted to do today. Uh, I didn't want to do a recap today at all. I'm supposed to be in there doing that loop till Monday. Um, but shit happens and uh, that's the thing about planning a trip like this sometimes you're gonna get disappointed and um, that's what happened to me and you know that's that's just what happens sometimes um, you plan a trip into a very remote area um, you know nobody's been there for quite some time that you can find unfortunately I couldn't do the loop I wanted as you guys know uh, I had a great time visiting with my friend Dave um, I was going to stay, I was going to try to do another loop, I was going to try to salvage it and there just wasn't really a loop that I could do that I wanted to do. It was supposed to be my big final, big trip of the year and um, it's not. So um, there's nothing I can do about it. I had a lot of great trips this summer. Um, I did a lot of uh, really remote places. My last trip to Tomogamy three weeks ago was amazing. Um, this was a great trip too. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't what I had hoped it would be. So, um, such is life. Anyways, Tomogamy won. Christina won. We're even right now. So, we'll see what happens in the summer. I might even come in the winter and uh, do a winter trip here. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm sorry I didn't uh, provide the trip that I was supposed to, but I hope you still enjoyed the video. Bye.